All right, welcome back to Culinary Composition <clears throat> on this episode of Gourmet Shepherd's Pie with me, your host, Chef JC. Okay, what I've done at this point is I've pulled out an onion. I'm going to need an onion here. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to basically julienne this onion, which I've done a million times on this show, but that's probably going to be the best way to do this. Now, one of the things that I want to do with this onion is I want it to be caramelized. I don't want it to be sweat. I want it to be brown. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cook it off right to the point where it's brown, but not burnt. And then I'm going to add about a pound and a half to two pounds of chopped meat to the mix. So we'll have a wonderful shepherd's pie. All right, give me one second here. Trying to get this peel off, not being very successful. Okay. Sometimes these onions, when they're so fresh, they don't want to let go of their peel. It's amazing. Uh, let me get that out of the way. Okay, I'm going to do a very quick chop on this. Again, Julienne. Now, what I want to do, like I said, is get a lot of color on this. So, one of the things that I'm going to do, as soon as I get this last piece chopped, I don't want it. There we go. Okay. I got some olive oil going in my pan. I don't want to put a lot in there because once I put the meat in there, the uh, fat from the meat is going to start creating a lot of uh, grease and I don't want it to get to the point where it's very greasy so I just added just enough so that it'll coat the onions and it'll help them to brown really well okay Let me chop this a little bit more remember what I said when you do julienne sometimes it's a really good idea to get your hands in there and just break it up the best way you know how yeah, I um, I was just kind of hanging around, and I uh, I said, you know, I didn't I haven't made a she shepherd's pie on this uh, show yet, and I thought basically a lot of people have stuff sitting in their house that they really don't use. Those cans sit there for years and years and years, and you just don't have a use for them. So I said, you know what? Let me put something together that's that's really good. It's going to taste gourmet. And that's going to be made with just regular items that you have in your pantry. You know, I mean, canned string beans and canned corn. You can use frozen if you want. You can use, um, uh, they have uh, medleys of different vegetables if you want to go that route. You know, for me, I just, I have so many cans of this stuff that I said, let me start using some of it. You know. Okay. A nice chop going here. My julienne. I'm pop that right into the hot oil. Okay. Now I want to show you that I am in fact using canned goods by showing you the cans. I open them up. I'm dumping them out. I got all the water out of them as much as I could. And all I'm going to do with this, very simply, is do a rough chop on everything. Just go over it with my knife a couple times so that the pieces are bite-sized instead of like long string beans and stuff. You have little bite-sized pieces, which are going to be nice. And because it's a canned vegetable, it's not in a raw state. It almost seems like it's kind of par-cooked. I really don't know how they do it with the cans because I don't use them very often. But I'm going to add these last. The string beans and the carrots are going to go in last so that they don't overcook because it's going to go into the oven when we're finishing it off. So very simply, I just run my knife over it a couple times. That's it. I'm going to take this whole mess and put it right into a bowl right now and just put it on the side. And I've found if you move your cutting board to the edge and just scrape your hand across right with the bowl underneath, boom, it works perfect every time. I got every piece in there, no problems. Put it over here. 
All right. Let me get a rag and clean my board real quick. Now, I went ahead and I made the instant mashed potatoes ahead of time. I followed the directions on the box. And then, like I said, now, <clears throat> I said basically that I'm going to use this Kraft blue cheese dressing that I found. It's just like a powder kind of thing. But, I mean, let's say you don't have that. I bet good money that you have macaroni and cheese, don't you? So you could use the macaroni and cheese cheese inside the macaroni and cheese box just add that to, to give yourself a, a cheddar cheese flavor of potato if you want to go over the top with that. I like blue cheese and um, sharp tasting cheeses, so that's what I'm going to go with. Now, as you can see, I'm continuing to brown these onions, and I'm going to bring them to that nice caramelization. And when I do, I'm going to come back, and then I'm going to drop in the meat. It's got about a pound and a half or so of nice chopped meat. Now, traditionally, shepherd's pie is made with lamb, but we're going to do it with beef, because I'm a beef guy and I didn't have any lamb. <laughs> so, I'm going to show you the potatoes. Here they are. They're all ready to go. I haven't added the blue cheese yet. I'm going to do that towards the end. I'm also going to put an egg on there, so we get a nice browning effect when we put it into the oven at 350 degrees. It'll probably take about 30 minutes or so. All right, we're going to see you on episode three, and we'll put most of it together for you. Thanks for joining us on another episode of Culinary Composition with me, your host, Chef JT.